So I saw this video and I immediately knew I had to do a video on it. So this is a state. This is a Russian media monitor. State TV host says that Tucker Carlson is a dead man. Hmm. I mean, I thought they liked him. No, no, no. He's saying that the powers that be, the elites in America, are going to kill Tucker Carlson because he's speaking too much. Okay. So why would he say that? I mean, that sounds bizarre. To if you're an American listening to this, you're like, what? That that's not going to happen. But if you're a Russian, it might make sense, given what happened to Prigozhin last week or how the system works in Russia. So we watch the other side sometimes, not not to hear what they think is true or what they're trying to project is true, but what they actually assume and what they how they analyze things or what what their what frame of reference they bring to the table so when i watched this i thought to myself wow this is really interesting it's kind of like i remember uh reading about churchill uh in the beginning of world war ii england was in it um the americans weren't quite in it yet i believe and, and england really needed the united states to come into world war ii and i think len lease was on but something happened to fdr and churchill's beside himself he's saying oh no fdr is going to have to resign <laughs> and it sounds like it sounds so foreign to our ears because and I think this is a really good analogy because no, he's not going to resign. He could have all kinds of problems and he's going to write, write out his term in the American system, in the British system, where if you have this catastrophic kind of thing, like our government was going to do this, but it turned out to be bad. I resign in disgrace and call a new government in the American system. I'm there for four years. I can screw up about as much as I want, but I mean, short of an impeachment, <laughs> I'm there for four years. And I mean, it's going to be good or it's going to be bad, but I'm there for four years. And if you like what was good or bad, you reelect me again. So, but his assumptions, Solyov's assumptions were just um, really interesting. Okay, so thank you again to the Russian Media Monitor. I'm going to read the uh, statements in English and then I'll pause periodically and comment. Okay, here we go. In Soviet times, our generation consistently lived with the feeling of an impending apocalypse. I remember our happy Soviet childhood when they would consistently say, the most important thing is that there is no war. There were pictures of a nuclear mushroom cloud and instructions on what to do in case of a nuclear war. There were all these jokes on this topic. If there are flashes of light, to hold your machine gun away from your body so the melting metal doesn't ruin your government-issued boots. All of a sudden, these jokes stop being jokes. It's very sad. It's sad because we're on the verge of a global hot war, which is inevitable. It's unavoidable because it benefits everyone. Okay, full stop there. This is essentially what Tucker Carlson said in his interview. Now, Sol Solvyov is going to play a clip of Tucker, but I did a, a whole video on this uh, day before yesterday. And whenever I cover Tucker, it doesn't really get very much play because I get it. He's not like somebody that you want to watch but i put it on there because you under you need to understand the insights so you know the the last video about this commentator had this many views the last one about tucker had that many but it's still important and it's worth doing just because it's important so you're going to see a little bit of that interview and if you want to go back to the previous one where you're hearing his his perception i yeah I, i'm not going to advertise it or anything but i, I would urge you to to think about it. Okay, the war of Ukraine and NATO against Russia since 2014 did away with a taboo. Okay, war of NATO against Russia since 2014. Like, look at that uh, revisionist history. This was a war where Russia invaded Ukraine. It was not a war of NATO against their, of course, NATO is supplying since 2022, uh, supplying Ukraine pretty significantly, but there was not a war of NATO and Ukraine against Russia. Did away with the taboo of on going to war with a nuclear nation because it would inevitably lead to nuclear war. Again, another standard Russian talking point is that this is going to inevitably lead to war. 
When it became clear that you can pull the tiger's whiskers or the bear's claw, all of them had decided, okay, let's go. These are the end times. We should realize this. Look, America does not fear a nuclear war. There will be a war for sure, either in Europe or Asia. Okay, again, this is a continual Russian talking points and repeaters of Russia talking points. Okay, why did they talk about nuclear war all the time? Because they're trying to back the foreign Western powers up from providing these weapons. Don't cross this line or it'll be a nuclear war. Don't cross that line or it'll be a nuclear war. Don't cross this line or it'll be a, a nuclear war. So that's what's happening. You don't hear this on the Western pro-Ukrainian side. Okay, Americans say very honestly and pragmatically, this poses no threat to us. These people are ready to take the world to its grave along with themselves. For that reason, Tucker Carlson's arguments sound like a self-fulfilling prophecy. They're not going to do COVID again. They're going to go to war with Russia. That's what they're going to do. There will be a hot war between the U.S. and Russia in the next year. Really? Yes, of course. They want it. I don't think that we'll win it, but that's a separate analysis. These are the two biggest nuclear arsenals in the world facing off against each other. It's insane. They're insane. I look at this and I see true hysteria. They've convinced themselves that our global enemy is Russia. And I really think Republicans mean that. Okay, now, what Tucker said was, it's like it was out of RT's script, right? I mean, what he said lines up almost perfectly with what they're saying in RT and TASS and Pravda. Now, who says that? A dead man walking, he says. Now, why would he say, who says that, a dead man walking? That's so interesting to my mind. Why would he even make this claim? Well, because if you challenge the system, then you have a target on your back and you could fall out of a hotel balcony or um, die in a fiery plane crash or whatever in Russia. And he's thinking that same thing about the United States. It's so bizarre and like what okay let's keep going he sincerely believes that the next step after the accusations and the declaration of impeachment will be an assassination of trump but this man who is currently the most popular english-speaking journalist well i'm not sure that he's currently the most popular he is uh, on cable news or was on cable news uh, a one of the most watched cable news shows, but cable news is reasonably small. He is popular with a large section of the right, the populist wing, the Trumpian wing, he's pretty popular with, and he's anathema to conservatives like me who are just like, at least on Ukraine. On some other things, I actually agree with some of his points, but on Ukraine, I think he's dead wrong, and so do most um, traditional conservatives. Okay, so he's not the most popular English speaking journalist. He signed his own death warrant. <laughs> they will not forgive him for the fact that he strives to interview our president and post it on a platform that has no censorship. Covering up with this part, I cannot rule out that in the near future, as he is leaving Europe, there will either be an air crash or something will happen to the car in which he travels, or he might eat something that he shouldn't. Maybe his heart will suddenly stop. Like These are all the ways that prominent Russians die when they uh, run afoul of Putin. I mean, it's, it's really bizarre to watch him think that, like literally think that and express that to his audience. Maybe his heart will suddenly stop. If I were in his place, I would tell no one of my travel routes because the number of sudden deaths surrounding the Obamas has been off the charts for a long time. I don't know what he's talking about with the number of sudden deaths surrounding the Obamas off the charts, but wow. I mean, like some people in administrations have died, maybe even under suspicious means, but it's nothing like what, what he's saying in Russia, but he's reading his understanding of the world into that. Now, if that's the case, the reason that I showed you this was now you have a better understanding of how to understand what's going on politically in Russia, because if that's how he really thinks, then what's really happening to uh, Igor Gherkin or Navalny or whoever else, right? And so you want to understand your enemy 
fully and fully appreciate where they're coming from in order to understand where they're going to go or what they're going to be saying next. Okay, that's what I wanted to share with you. I doubt that Tucker's in any real danger, but it's it's a pretty significant thing to, to understand Solvyov's mind. All right. Thank you for your time, the shares, the likes, the subscribes, the coffees. I appreciate all of that, and I appreciate you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.